On this ProGraph tutorial, we're going to talk about making product shots look pretty. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dave Koss. Welcome to another ProGraph tutorial. This is the second part in our product series. If you missed the first one, I would suggest going back and learning how to build a bottle. If you don't want to learn how to build a bottle, you just want to learn how to do the label and some of the texturing, then uh, feel free to download in the show notes, the or in the tutorial notes, the, the little uh, links to a zip file so you can get this model and uh, you can get the label and... Uh, and move on with this. And if you um, don't need the bottle, if you already created the bottle, you're still going to need the label. So I would go get the label. So we're moving along now in Octane. In the last one, we were just talking in generalities, but this is totally Octane now. And we've got uh, generic glass. We've got our liquor in the middle. We did an index of 1.01. So we didn't have any weirdness going on, any weird like magnification, odd things going on with the liquor because we have the the uh, glass on the outside doing the refracting that we need. The other thing that I like to do is go into my uh, render settings. We'll probably need to up some of our our depth on our uh, on our gloss and specular. I've already done it here. I've put it up to seven. Uh, but you'll notice, like, if I bring these down, um, everything turns black. Because there's a point where you're going to be looking through, like, in, at this angle, you're going to be looking through a lot of layers. And the higher you bring this up, the more you're going to be able to see through it. But make sure you don't really crank it. Only put it where it needs to be, because that just adds time to your render. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is... Uh, put on the label and um, I guess no you know what I'm gonna change my mind I think we need to go into this um, this uh, liquor color and make it look better I'm gonna start over for those of you who didn't do the first tutorial and I'm gonna create a uh, new octane material that is a specular material and I'm gonna just drag it into the liquor the index we're going to do 1.01 .01, and the transmission is where we're going to set the color. Now what I like to do is just hold up the bottle to my screen and just look at the color and get it where I think it looks fairly close. The thing about this is that it's going to change in different environments based on the color and uh, based on the lighting and all that kind of mess so it's it's kind of hard to tell so just hold it up the best you can and then once you get into like your final beautification process you'll probably change that color because it will look a little bit different you know if you put it on a psych wall or something like that all right so that's a little bit better looking I'm gonna hit save see even in here if I look at this from this angle it looks one color if I look at it over here it looks a different color so don't worry about that too much right now. We'll come back to that. I'm going to increment save at this point. The reason I'm going to do that is because we're going to do some destructive editing. We're going to mix down these um, these lathes that we did to something um, that we can uh, edit and select uh, polygons on because we're going to need that. When you're in Octane, you have to do it that way. You have to select certain uh, areas you can't stack textures the way you do in standard render. So um, I'm going to orient the bottle the right way. So Z is going back in that direction so that I know this is the front of the bottle. And the next thing that I'm going to do is go to front view. And in front view, we're going to start doing some slicing. Let's turn off the liquor. And let's turn off the top and just concentrate on the bottle right now because that's what really matters. Um, this particular bottle, it doesn't have the label that we're going to use. We're doing something different. We're doing uh, this reference right here. 
me bring that up from before from the previous tutorial so you can see what that looks like so if I change my display here we'll be able to see this a little bit better um, just gonna move my reference over here and on the bottle we're gonna hit C because we're gonna uh, basically turn this all into polys so we're not gonna be able to edit that anymore um, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the polygon selection mode and on the bottle I'm gonna use this loop path cut so if you don't have that shortcut like I programmed uh, custom you're gonna hit shift C just type loop you can get that loop path cut and we're gonna create a cut that is on the top and the bottom of this label that we see here I'm gonna do that and let's see about right there so what that's doing if we go back into perspective mode is it's creating those cuts so that we can do a selection if I it were to select like this right now uh, nothing happens first of all always keep in mind your your selection options here you want tolerant selection um, unless you're gonna drag around the whole entire piece you want tolerant selection on if I had tolerant selection off I couldn't select this section just by doing that I want that on the other thing we want off is only select visible elements. We want to select all the way through. So on our front view, if I have only select visible elements on and I select like this, watch what happens when I rotate around to the back of the bottle. I don't have everything selected. It's not what I want. I want to select it all the way around. So I'm going to have that off. I'm going to select this. Now here's what happens. The inside of the bottle selects because in the previous tutorial, we went through and we created geometry on the inside. We don't want that. So I'm going to go back to this front view. This is actually pretty easy. If you hold down command and just select that section there, it's pretty much going to get rid of all of that so that we only have the faces selected on the outside of the bottle in this section. Now in order to make this easy so we don't have to keep coming back and selecting that, I'm going to do a set selection. If you don't have a shortcut to it, shift C, set selection. There we go. Makes this little nifty triangle here and we're going to name it ABC, always be naming. This is going to be called label. Because if you get like a bottle with like a whole bunch of crazy selections going on you're gonna have to select these and they also they all say polygon selection one polygon selection two that's just ridiculous so name everything make it easy on yourself later on when you open this project a year later and you're like what is all this garbage all right so now that we have that there is the label that is going to be in the notes in the zip file and the label looks like this johnny runner red label I'm going to create a new Octane material and in Diffuse I'm going to go to Octane Image Texture. I'm going to load me up that label. Now keep in mind I know a lot of people use nodes when they use Octane but this is a little bit too simple for that and there's some people that aren't uh, very well versed in nodes. This isn't a complicated node thing. Um, you know we'll probably get to some node stuff later on but right now it's just overly complicated to just get into nodes especially people who are new at this this is something you're, you'd probably be more used to so we're gonna throw this onto the bottle so this is what happens that is not what we want at all so what's going on we want to make some adjustments to this material and most of the time you want to adjust the material within the octane material it's not like you usually do in cinema where you go in here and you adjust your projection and your length and all of that we're going to actually do this inside 
of here. We also only want it on that selection that we did. So it's real simple. If we click on our tag here for the material, there's that selection. We can just drag down or even type in label. And now you can see that the label is only in the selection that we chose. We want it to be on the front. We're going to use this as a reference here. We can see all four sides. And if we click on our material and we go into the texture, this is where we can make our adjustments. There's the UV transform. And um, we're going to move it. First of all, we're going to rotate it. Um, not on Z. We're actually, <clears throat> we're going to translate it first. So if I translate this, you can see I'm moving it on X, but it's going up and down. That's because it's on its side. And so we need to rotate it. So you'll notice that these actually rotate. One of these here. It's the Z. The Z rotates it. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees on Z. That's not it. 180 degrees on Z. Start to move this around. Duh. Negative 90 degrees. I knew that. All right. So now that, you know, these are going to be backwards, unfortunately, but um, now we can start to, to center it where it needs to be. That's just how our UVW is facing. So look, now you'll notice that it is not uh, scaled correctly on X in this case. Or Y. So we're going to start pulling these in until we have the correct ratio and the correct scale so that this fits the way we want it to. So now we can sit here and move on Y because it is at 90 degrees. Start to rein this in and get it looking how we want it to. Center it up. The other thing that we're going to do while we have it here before I forget, we're going to go to the uh, texture itself where we've loaded it in and in border mode because we don't want this to be um, a looping texture we're gonna do white color for the border mode so that on the back side we don't have it repeating over in the back so that's getting closer to where we want it we're gonna go back down to these transformations and start reining it in That looks good from that angle. And now from here, there we go. There's our label. Now, of course, we got the white to get rid of. The, here's, how you, here's how you do this. You have to fill this area with glass. So the way we're going to do that is by doing a mix texture. We're going to create an octane mix material. And we've got our two options here. In the background, we're going to have that glass, which I need to be naming, glass. And we're going to have our label, which is going to go on the top of that. In our mix texture, material one, label. And what you'll notice if we drag this label, which is a mix texture now, into uh, the existing texture, is that it's just mixing those two together. That's not what we want. We don't want to see like part of one or the other, the glass or the label. We want to uh, see both. And we're going to do that by clicking texture and loading an alpha channel that we can use to cut it out. Now the easiest way to do this is just to go to the label, the original label under diffuse and just copy that texture and then go back over here and paste it in. Now you notice it's still not right. That's because by default, if we click, it's trying to take the, um, the colors to create an alpha. We want to actually use the alpha. So this drop down gives us alpha. There we go. We've got a pretty label. Now, the thing is, it's very, very flat. So this is when we're going to start working on 
the uh, ref reflection and the bump and everything else. And in our original label, this is where we're going to do everything. First off, it needs to be glossy. Material type is glossy. So we got this nice gloss. It's pretty good, I guess. But we want to take that a step further. We want to have a little bit of bump and we want to have like some some different layering, some specular control, different speculars in different areas. So the other label, you've got the, the bump and the spec. This is uh, what came in the little zip file. The other label here, spec, is what we're gonna bring in. So I'm actually just gonna, um, I'm gonna go back into the label itself this, I find that this is easier for me. I'll go to the diffuse channel and copy it and just paste it into specular. So all the settings and everything are exactly the same. If you were doing nodes, yeah, there's another way to do it, but we're not going to get into nodes right now. This, this is a little too easy for that. Everything's exactly the same. The only thing we need to do is change that name for specular, specular uh, texture, and it's loaded up. Now to see what we're really doing here, just to kind of make things extreme, we're going to go to the index and make it one, which is mirror. So you'll see what's going on here. You have, if I go back to Photoshop, we can look at this. You've got white. And that white is perfect mirror. And you've got this colored specular, which is coming in here. So you can see that bit of gold colored specular there. And then you've got black here. And that gives you nothing. Well, we don't really want nothing. We want something. So in this reflection red right here, I'm going to select it in Photoshop. And I'm just going to give it a bit of gray. I'm just going to fill it with, I don't know, let's say about right here, 30. So we have a little bit. We're adding white to that black. So what's going to happen now is if we go to our specular, our material and we reload it we get a little bit now I think that's still too much I just want like a subtle reflection so um, I could either go in and fill it again or to make it easier I could hit command L or control L and then just darken it a little bit if you have just a little bit of, of gray in there instead of a pure black then whenever you come back in here you're just gonna have that subtle reflection that's what we want Another thing to keep in mind is right now, we've got our index all the way up uh, to, to mirror. What we really want to do is take it and control it somewhere in the, I don't know, three to four range like this. And since we brought that reflection down a little bit by using our index control, now we don't have the red anymore. So I'm just gonna go in and undo and save my gray and reload it. It's just kind of a, a little back and forth game, getting it where you want it. I think that's too much now. So we're going to find a happy medium somewhere in here. Let's try that. The other thing is you're going to lose a little bit of the reflection whenever we blur. If you go into your roughness tab, give it a couple ticks, you can start to blur just a little bit. I don't want to do it too much. I like seeing some of those lines in there. And so now that we've blurred it, I'm gonna go to index and jack it up just a little bit more. This is kind of where you basically just play with it and you guess. The other thing is that this might work fine in this environment, but when you get it in a different environment, uh, maybe a psych wall or something, it doesn't look like you'd like it to. You have to come back and and rein it in just to perfect it and make it look how you want it to look, not necessarily how it would look in real life. Something that would look maybe a little exaggerated even. And the final thing that we're going to do for this label is the bump map. If I open the bump map that was in the zip file here, see I have these lines going on in the red area. And that's that basically all it is, is just a minor gradient with a slight fall off on the sides there. And that's going to allow us to create these little ridges. So again, I'm going to take this texture, 
copy it to the bump map. And then I'm going to change the file name, of course, because right now it says spec. There we go. Now we have these lines here. Now, if we don't like the um, harshness of the lines, we can change it. Now, there's two different things you have to take into consideration here. There's the power, which would be how much it is in general, like just like how high it is, I guess. So if we leave it at one, you could also change the gamma, which is going to change those grays. So it actually could make it thinner or wider because you're kind of pushing those grays up or bringing, uh, bringing them down. It's essentially kind of changing the contrast of those grays from that file. So you just control these, make them how you want them to look. And then look at it from far away too, because sometimes if you're going to do a far away product shot, you actually have to take these and exaggerate them a little for them to look how you want them to look from far away. Just put this back to one. There we go. So for purposes of this, I'm going to do 1.5 gamma and 0.8 power. And those are our lines. We have the reflections going on. We've got the bump. It's nice and pretty. And we're pretty much good to go on the label there. Now, we're going to go up to the top and work on the cap. On the cap, um, we, got the, we got it labeled top here. I'm going to turn it back on. Let that load in octane. And we're going to do a couple things. First of all, we want this to be glossy. I've already created a red, red-ish, almost maroon texture. And I'm going to make this a glossy texture instead, which is all well and good. But if you look at what we have going on here in this particular bottle, although it's a different color, you can see that it's not completely glossy. It's got some of a, a roughness going on. So I'm going to take the roughness up. quite a bit. The other thing that I'm going to do in my index is adjust that because we don't want it to look all like crazy shiny. We just want it to have a little bit of reflection. And now that I've brought it down, I'm going to bring my roughness back down. And that's feeling all right. Now, the other thing is that if you look at the cap and if you look at the bottle as well, there are some minor imperfections going on. Um, we're going to take care of that with bump. This bump in particular, um, I just like using Perlin, which is the basic bump, especially if you're doing something super subtle. No one's going to notice. So I'm going to load Octane uh, Noise. It's got a Perlin on it by default, but I'm going to go in and jack that up a bit. And this is what I want it to look like, but I don't want it to be as strong. So I'm just going to go bring those gammas down. And I don't even know if you can see that over the interwebs. But it just has these subtle little bumps going on and ridges. That make it look like the paper that it's made out of. The other thing is that the top here on this bottle has these lines going all the way around it. And sometimes it's a little bit wonky working with, uh, with these um, standard um, surfaces uh, from Cinema 4D in Octane, but I'm going to show you how you can do this here. I'm going to um, first create a new octane material. And the reason I'm doing this is because I like to do a reference of my bump in a diffuse before I put it into the bump channel. So we're going to uh, hit C on top here. So we make geometry for this top. And all we want to do really is just um, select this um, area of the top. Just like that. 
we're going to create a set selection. So you can hit Shift C and then type set selection. And that selection is going to be called rim, I guess. I don't know. All right. So if we take this new blank texture, put it on the top, and we set the selection to the rim, we're going to start putting these lines in. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to my texture and I'm going to create a surface. And then I'm going to go to tiles. Well, under tiles, I'm going to select lines. And this is how we're going to create it. We're going to do white, black, black, and white. So we have these lines, but there's not enough of them. So we're going to oops, we're going to start changing our vertical scale. Get that vertical scale down there. And this is what I'm talking about with the wonkiness. It starts acting funny, and that's just because it's trying to translate. So instead, we'll try the global scale. Nothing, right? So this is one of those cases where you would go into your actual uh, tag itself and you would start adjusting because that's actually going to work. So see, now we have those lines. But we want to create a little bit more of a, a gradient going on in here. So if we go back, we change the grout width, and we change the bevel width, you can see that we can really rein in a little bit more of a gradient you know from white to black going on so it's a little more uh, gradual so we have that set up that's going to be our bump right so now that it's all set we can just go to this diffuse texture copy it now we don't want to put it into the texture we already have because it's going to do the whole thing like that it's going to do the whole cap like that so we just duplicate this and we're going to start naming. We're going to call this the top, or you could call it cap. I'll call that the rim. I'm going to put that rim into this tag. The reason you put it into it, I'll show you the difference. If I just put this rim on here, and even if I applied the selection, what's going to happen, and I guess you're not going to see it unless I use the uh, diffuse reference what's going to happen is just going to put it in regular without any of these settings that we set so let me backtrack here if i take the rim and i put it straight into it it retains all the same information it still has that v length of nine now they still look the same because we haven't done the bump but if we go in we copy that bump from our reference go to the rim go to the bump go to this texture now you'll notice we already have a noise here, so what do we do? Well, it's easy. You just go to Octane and you do a multiply. So now when we click on it, we have these two layers. Now you would this is where you would start at this point, this is where you would start getting into nodes because you could actually see how this is laid out. Me personally, like this is simple enough to where I can kind of see in my head what these nodes are. Um, I could even open it and, and show You can see what it's doing in the node editor. It's taking your tiles and your noise, it's multiplying them together, and it's putting it into the bump. But for me, it's just easy to, to visualize it in my head. I've got a multiply with these two layers on it. It's got the original noise we made, and it's got the tile, and we have these nice little ridges going on here on top. Now, we want to do something similar with the noise on the glass as well. So the way that we do that is very similar how we did the top, except there's going to be one little issue, and I'm going to show you what that is. Let me turn the liquor back on so that we can really see these imperfections when we put them in. I'm going to go to glass, and I'm going to go to bump, and then I'm going to create that octane noise like we did before. And that looks awful. But I'm going to create the scale that I want. 
It's going to look pretty bad. But here's the difference. If I were to take the gamma down like I usually would, I still have like crazy blur going on it. Even if I bring all the contrast down, I still have crazy blur going on in here. So the question is, how do you get that look and, you know, this this kind of really cool bumpy look and and be able to bring it down even more and not start blurring everything? Because if you notice this bottle like this, I don't know if you can see it on here, but the stuff that you see through it isn't necessarily blurred. It's just a different color and maybe distorted. If I put it in front of my face. So we don't want this right here. So the way that you can control that is by, instead of doing like a multiply, we're going to keep what we have in here. We're going to go back up to Octane, and we are going to do Mix Texture. You can see it takes what we already had, and then it combines it with another layer. In this case, nothing. Because all we want to do is be able to control um, what we made on one hand and nothing on the other hand. And since you can't get that blur all the way down, this helps you control that. So you can be a little bit more subtle with that noise. So now this looks a lot more clear, but it has the noise in it just because we brought this amount up just a little bit. And I don't know how well, honestly, that you can see that um, inside of you know, a compressed tutorial. But if I let this play out for a second, hopefully we can we can take a look and see. Just let it render. So see, in the glass here, we have all those imperfections, but it's not blurry. And now that I'm looking at it fully rendered, I can say, you know, I want to take it up just a little bit more because it's just slight imperfections. If you stare at the bottle up close, you'll see all of that. But from far away, you're not going to see it. So that pretty much wraps it up. We've got uh, our bottle built and uh, it's looking pretty. And now we're ready to do a little bit more with it in the next one. Um, we're going to uh, put it in a scene. We might add a little bit of bump mapping in the areas that we're going to see, uh, such as uh, maybe this little piece on the bottom. It just depends, um, you know, your uh, your client may not care about that. They may want to leave that stuff off because it, you know, it just kind of dirties it up. And sometimes you want stuff when you're doing print or you're doing a spot to not have all that extra stuff on it. So we will talk about that in the next one. We'll talk about lighting and we'll put it in an environment and we'll make it look pretty. Um, so if you uh, have not listened to our podcast, please check it out at brograph.com. We got tons of tutorials on there. You can add us on Facebook, Twitter, of course, Instagram. Um, and uh, brograph.com has the link to everything that you could imagine, including our other tutorials. And until next time, I'm Dave Koss. Have a good one. Later, bros.